you, the woman who's got the sihir, or the man who's got the sihir, he would begin to feel, or she would begin to feel more relaxed outdoors than indoors. Okay? And in relation to arguments, brothers, I was doing some reading in relation to arguments. The kuffar themselves, they have something called narcissism. Narcissism, brothers, yeah, is a personality disorder that exists where the wife, normally the wife, I would say, begins to bully her husband so badly, really bullying tactics. She, she becomes, she has unreasonable expectation. She becomes, she, just, she becomes verbally abusive to her husband. She begins to gaslight. For example, I didn't say that. I didn't, I didn't say that. You, I, I didn't hear you say that. I didn't hear him say that. They begin to gaslight, ring the law. And they put somebody in a hopeless situation into a corner that they don't know what to do. And that leads to something called Stockholm Syndrome. Okay? Stockholm Syndrome is that a person is so cornered to the corner, he begins to accept what the other person is saying. And brothers, that is something, a disaster. And you know what? Most men, they're in a, they're in a relationship, even the kuffar, they're in a relationship which is such an abusive relationship where the wife now, she begins to beat her husband, bully her husband, she uses crazy tactics, she becomes emotional, she becomes a control freak, she begins to have this grandiose type of mentality, she begins to control her husband. Okay, this is serious. We understand it as serious, they understand it as a personality disorder, my dear brothers. Okay, brothers, the other thing about, the other symptom, brother, brothers, is that the husband and wife begin to feel uncomfortable with each other on an intimate relationship. The other one is uh, the sihir of muhabba. Okay? We're talking about tiwala. Tiwala is a specific ta'aliz which is made with the tiwala of love. Specifically to bring husband and wife okay, together again and so on and so on. The husband himself, he begins to love his wife excessively. Over the top. I love you. I can't live without you. So he begins to behave like a woman. And he begins to stay in the corner of the, of the house. He goes, don't go, don't go. If you go, and he begins to stop trusting his wife. He begins to stop trusting his, uh, his wife. He goes, you can't go out. If you go out, I don't know where you're going to go. So he begins to stop trusting his wife anymore. So there's problems start happening and so on and so on. And that is what you call the sihir of muhabba. Excessive love towards the other party, <coughs> excessive love towards the other party, okay? Extreme desire towards the other party. You know when this is normally done? You know when they get married? Before they get married, one party will do the sihat on the other party. And then what will happen is that it will start happening between the two. And they begin to go crazy with each other or one party will go crazy with the other party, excessively, over the top. Always want to be in the all the time. SubhanAllah. Okay? And the other one is impatient. They become so impatient. They have to have the uh, copulation or the relationship there and then. Doesn't matter where it is. And they get upset if they don't get it. SubhanAllah. And they have extreme desire and lust for that wife. So it's normally done before the marriage. So the person begins to love his wife. Come and do me, come shut me, just me, just me, just me, just shut this one out. I can't wait, I can't wait. You know, subhanAllah, he goes, I'm not going to get married. I need to get married. I don't care what happens, I need to get married. I can't wait, she's my love of my life. When they get married, the sihir begins to wear off. Okay. I never loved you in the first place. SubhanAllah. You see that? Okay, SubhanAllah. You laugh. But Wallahi, I mean, brother, it's a serious issue. Okay? You become blind obedience to one's wife. Blind obedience to a wife. You know when a husband begins to follow his wife blindly, the kawama goes. The kawama means the authority of the husband goes, finished, down the drain. And if you look at the majority of the houses, brothers, especially amongst us Pakistanis, who's in control, mommy or daddy? Oh, mommy, in the majority of the cases. Obviously, in your case, brother, daddy is in control, mashallah, that's good. <laughs> yeah, alhamdulillah. But in most of the cases, you know, it's the mother that's in control. 
Why? It does make you think, brothers. Also, the sihr of tahiyyib. The sihr of tahiyyib. The inside? Inshallah, I'm just going to finish up these points quickly. There's another point here, brothers, okay, where you begin to see objects that begin to move in front of your eyes. You're sitting down watching TV, and suddenly you see the remote control moving. You think, what's, what's going on here? It's moving because it's the delusion, so an illusion of the eyes that are making the remote control move. So something small appears to be big, something big appears to be small, something small appears to be wide or large. So you begin to see things like move in front of your eyes. It doesn't feel right. You know it's not right. That is another type of sihir, which is sihir of seeing false objects. And this one, the nasty one, brothers. You know why? One man, he kept on seeing steps. Steps, steps, steps. You know steps? And you know what he did? He opened his window, he was living on the fourth floor. He saw steps. He thought he was going to walk on the steps. He jumped out and he died. Brothers, see brothers? Sometimes when people suddenly hear somebody just fall out of the 50th floor, it's not going to fall out of the floor, or floor just, I oh, wonder, I feel like dying. He's not going to do that. Something must have made him do it. There's a cause for it. That's something that made him do it. Okay, brothers. Frequent headaches. Frequent headaches, brothers. Okay, sorry, brothers. Seher of lunacy. Seher of lunacy, brothers, is seher of being mad. Severe absent minded. You forget. Every single time you say to your wife or your husband, go make me a cup of tea, go into the kitchen. You think, why the kitchen for? Somebody sent me in the kitchen for what? Why? I'm in the kitchen. You don't understand why you're in the kitchen. Then you go back and say, did you tell me to do something? Yeah, I made you, told you to make me a cup of tea. Okay, okay then, you go in the kitchen. Come back, tea's not even made properly. You bring back an empty cup. So here, jar bill. There's nothing in there. SubhanAllah. Unclear speech. The person begins to speak gibberish. He doesn't speak clearly. So he mumbles. He doesn't have sync with his brain and his teeth or brain and his tongue. There's no sink there at all, okay? Bulging eyes, you look to him, you know he's mad. You know he's mad. Funny thing is, brothers, you know, subhanAllah, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in most cases, on this issue, you're not going to be accountable for it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when, when, the, when, he, when, uh, when, when the fuqaha, the scholars spoke about this, he said, they said, there are two types of mad people. The first type of mad person, is the one, when you look to him, you know he's mad. You know he's majnoon. You know the pen has been lifted off the paper for him. Meaning he's not, his, his actions are not recorded. He is saved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other person who is mad, is the one who knows the wahi from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but doesn't implement the wahi. He is mad in the eyes of Allah. And Allah says in the Quran, Sa'ala sa'ilun bil adabil waqi lil kafirina laysa lahu Allah said, the Sa'i, the questioner will ask the question on Yom al Qiyamah. Is there going to be any punishment? And Allah will say to you, did you do your responsibility that I told you to do? Very quickly, brothers, suffocating at night. When you feel suffocating at night, you can't breathe at night properly. Okay? Especially after Maghrib. Asr, at the end of Asr and Maghrib, you start feeling it. You can't breathe. You, you're gasping for breath. You can't breathe properly. This is another sign of Seher of Junoon. The inability to do a task, which I mentioned, I told you to make something, but you never, you don't, you forgot. Disinterested in one's appearance. The person doesn't care about himself. He likes to live rough. He's smelling, he's stinking all the time. This is another sign of uh, Seher of uh, Junoon. The other type of Seher is uh, the Seher of Lethargicness. The person begins to feel lethargic. Weak, always, you know, want to sleep, always isolated. He becomes an introvert instead of an extrovert. He, all these issues, he's in constant silence all the time. And um, he's antisociable, he's absent minded as well. He gets frequent headaches, a lot of headaches, loads and loads of headaches he gets. Okay? The other type of sihir is the sihir of hawakim. This is a very nasty one, brothers. This is the one that normally gives you dreams, bad dreams. The sihr of awatib. The patient begins to experience nightmares. The patient begins to 
see dreams where someone's calling them in the dream. It's a silhouette. You don't know what the person, somebody's calling you. The patient hears voices when he's awake. All his voices, what's what's up? The patient themselves always has suspicion. The patient themselves is, has sleepless nights. He cannot sleep. He's always thinking. His mind's in override. Okay? He has scary dreams. He sees animals. He sees black dogs. He sees snakes. All these kind of things will have will happen with this person. And that is the sihr of hawatib, which is to do with bad dreams. The other one is, brothers, is the sihr of black magic to do with illness, sickness, marida or mir, marid. Constant pain in the body. Always pain in the body. Why is this pain there? Especially when the Quran has been recited on the person, you will begin to feel pain. Total paralysis of the body. The body has, doesn't know which way to go. It moves this way, then it moves this way. Unusual places, and so on and so on. Epileptic fits. Okay? Also, the blood, uh, the sihr of nafis, the one I said that, the one that bleeds, bleeds all the time, the woman will begin to have miscarriages, irregular, uh, um, uh, irregular periods and so on and so on. Sihr of impending marriage. This is a common one, my dear brothers. Sihr of impending marriage is a nasty one, brothers. Sihr of impending marriage is where you want to marry somebody and somebody prevents you from marrying that person. Okay? Then you end up marrying that person anyway. Then, that per then somebody else, the mother or the father, because they're not happy with the marriage, they will do sihr of impending marriage. So when, when the time comes for marriage, you will never get married. I know some sisters that have come up to me, they are 45, 46 years old, but they cannot get married. Every single time a proposal comes, in the last minute, it's broken. It just breaks. And there are reasons that why that happens. I, can't, I don't have the time to go through that, brother. But again, you, the, the symptoms for that is absent-mindedness, pain in the lower back. If somebody's got pain in the lower back, a lot, lower back, a lot of lower back pain, that is a sign of impending marriage, my dear brothers. And the general case of failed marriages. And there's other issues as well, brothers, that we have. Finally, very quickly, brothers, what is the solution? Very quickly, okay? If the sihir is eaten, my dear brothers, you will have senna. Senna itself, brother, is a herbal, uh, what you call, leaf. Okay, it's, some people know it as senna pot, but we're talking about senna, the leaf. The leaf, you would boil it, make jar of tea out of it, and you would drink it on an empty stomach, and the sihir will pass through the back passage. <coughs> Inshallah, bi'iznillah. And Rasulullah mentioned the hadith about senna. He said, if there was any cure for death, it would be sent. But there is no cure for death. See? The other way you can get rid of the sihr is by cupping. Rasulullah he said about cupping, he said, cupping is a healing for free. You can either get honey will heal you, cupping will heal you, and cauterization will heal you, which is which you burn the area. Okay? And he goes, that is forbidden for you to do. The third one is Rukya Shariya. The Rukya Shari'ah is when you recite certain verses of the Qur'an upon a person right up to his ear. And if you see the majority of the Raqis brothers, they don't stand far back and they recite on the person. They will stand very close to the person, sorry brother. They will stand very close to the person, okay? And they would sometimes go right up to the ear of the person and they would say, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Rajeem A'udhu Billahi Sameeun Aleem Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Rabbil Alameen See? So you remind them of Tawheed Because when the jinn is inside the body You remind him of Tawheed The oneness of Allah Rabbil Alameen Maliki Yawmid Deen You see what I mean brothers? So you remind them of Tawheed The jinn doesn't like that Jinn does not like that at all He hates it Until he begins to react When he begins to react he will speak on the tongue of the person. Obviously, this brother is not possessed, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Okay? He will begin to react on the tongue of the person. On the tongue of the person. So he will speak on the tongue of the person. When he speaks, he will speak filth, brothers. He will attack Rasulullah, he will attack Allah, he will attack the Quran. 
until you continue to recite. You continue to recite, you continue to recite, you continue to recite. You begin to burn it with the Quran, burn it with the Kalam of Allah. If you continue to speak the way you, but Allah tie your tongue, you make dua against it as well while you're making the ruqya. And this is the way you would make ruqya. And Rasulullah he said the best ruqya is the one you do upon yourself. Hold your forehead, make ruqya on yourself all the time, brothers. The adhkar on yourselves all the time, brothers. Especially after the Salat al-Fajr and Salat al-Isha. Very, very important. Rasulullah said, two salats are hard on my ummah, but they are so beneficial for my ummah. And he said, Fajr and Isha. Fajr and Isha, brothers. Hardship for my ummah, but they're the best salats, brothers. Wallahi, brothers. That's why at the time of Fajr, what you will do, brothers, you will basically say, La ilaha illallah, wahdahu la sharika la, lahu al-mulk wa lahu al-hamd wa huwa ala kulli shayin kathir. A hundred times. Okay, no evil will touch you. In the morning when you wake up, have your seven dates, preferably Ajwa dates. If you can't get hold of Ajwa dates, you have Medina dates. And no evil will touch you. You have Tawakkul in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no evil will touch you. The last two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah will protect you, inshallah ta'ala. Go to sleep with Wadu. When you go to sleep with Wadu, Allah will appoint an angel to protect you when you go to sleep with Wadu. Which means no evil would go near you at that time. The Fajr brother, <coughs> brothers is very, 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 uh, very, very important, my, my dear brothers. And there are certain verses, brothers, that you can recite. In relation to you getting possessed by jinn, just by jinn, brothers. Jinn will possess you for four reasons, brothers. We're not talking about sihr now, we're talking about jinn. The first reason the jinn will possess you is severe anger. Anger. If you get angry a lot, jinn will possess you. Okay? Intense fear. If you're always scared, watching movies, watching exorcists, watching this, watching that, watching this, Dracula, Frankenstein, I don't know, uh, uh, Dawn of Evil Dead or something like that, whatever. You're watching these movies and you're scared all the time, you're going to get possessed by their brothers. Because you don't fear Allah, you fear the movie. That's what it is. The other one is, is indulgence in desires. A lot of desire, brothers. Desire, 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 meaning sexually desire. Even with your wife, that's what we make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we have copulation with our wives. Okay? Wives, inshallah, brothers. Okay, inshallah, brothers. Wives, inshallah. Okay? Inshallah. Allah give us, inshallah, many wives, inshallah. In this dunya and in the akhirah. And the one who does command in good and forbidden evil, my dear brothers, just for your information, make you make Iman, increase your Iman, inshallah, so the jinn keep away from you. Okay? But there's one Surah al Ain, one made of Jannah, brothers. And obviously, alhamdulillah, Rasulullah said, What do you like most? He said, I like women, I like Athar, and I like my milk and my cushion. He said that. So, what did Rasulullah say? He said, I like the women. He says, I like to play with my horse, I like to play with my wives. You see what I mean? So Rasulullah he loved women. And we know that because he had nine wives. But well, obviously for us, no nine wives. Allah blocked it at four. But at least do two, inshallah, or three, and subhanAllah. But there's one full of aim that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. And inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us, inshallah, this one. Because she is the most beautiful one. She is the one with bigger eyes. She is the one that has all the credentials, inshallah. And her name is Al Aina. What a beautiful name as well. Allah Akbar. Al Aina. She will keep you happy, and she is the most beautiful of the beauties inside Jannah. Allah give us that, inshallah. And Rasulullah said, the first wife is what? Half your deen. Yeah? The second wife is what? Anybody know what the second wife is? Huh? The first wife is half Eden. What's the second wife? Two thirds. And Baraka. So she give you Baraka the second wife. What's the third wife? Rasulullah Sallam say. Makhfira. The third third wife is Makhfira. Was the fourth wife? She would save you from the hellfire. So go for the fourth brothers. Inshallah, <laughs> brothers. Save yourself from the hellfire, brothers. Inshallah. Go for it. Inshallah. Don't sit around do nothing. Come on, brothers. But do the dawah as well, brothers. Do the dawahs. So, brothers, the last one is complete negligence of the deen. So, brothers, inshallah, brothers, you know what? 
I tried to cover as much as I could, brothers, uh, for the topic of um, Sihr and Jinn. And remember, brothers, don't forget the Ayatul Kursi at night as well, brothers. Very important to recite Ayatul Kursi <coughs> because the Ayatul Kursi itself will protect you using the Malaika and the angels, inshallah ta'ala. Okay, wa sallallahu alayhi wa ahli wa sallam. Wa alhamdulillah, wa sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 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 Allah, may Allah